Rossini wrote the opera for the Opera House in Venice, where he'd just arrived and was looking to make his mark. It was based on a novel by Sophia Lee and various Italian plays based on it. There was an enormous craze at the time for all things English and also all things Scottish, fueled by the enormous popularity of Sir Walter Scott's novels. And Rossini would go back to, to Scott himself several times, as would Donizetti after him. But it wasn't a real Elizabethan world that they were looking for. Through these late 18th century novels, they were definitely looking to a fictionalised, romanticised Elizabethan world. But the idea of the queen at the centre of the court was an incredibly powerful one. It suited Rossini terribly well because he could then create this drama of four people in a really tight and dramatic love quartet. In many ways, it's a very old-fashioned storyline. It could have been set by Handel or any of the 18th century composers. We have a queen who is in love with her courtier, the Earl of Leicester, but she can't marry him because that would be politically unacceptable. Whatever his feelings for her, he's gone and married someone else, and in the worst possible way, he's in fact secretly married the daughter of her rival. He's married Matilda, the daughter of Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, this is where we part company from any real history. When this opera opens, Mary has been defeated and executed by Leicester, by Elizabeth's favourite. And he has married the daughter that never existed in history. Mary, Queen of Scots, of course, only had the one son, James VI, but for our purposes, she also had a son and daughter, Henry and Matilda. So our opera centres around the arrival of Matilda and Henry at Elizabeth's court, disguised as refugees from the Scottish Wars, with Matilda married to Leicester, Leicester betrothed, it would appear, to Mary, and in the midst of all this, the scheming Duke of Norfolk is setting up the House of Cards, ready to make his own bid for the throne by destroying Leicester, exposing this marriage. So you can tell from that explanation, this isn't real history. This is a very, very concentrated romantic drama based on a four-way conflict of personalities between these four people in the midst of an observing, hostile court where everything they do is seen, everything that they want is known, and everything that they do is going to catch up with them. Elisabetta was an enormous success, and on the basis of that, he went on to write a series of ever more complicated, ever more difficult, ever more grandiose operas for Naples, and they were really the core and heart of his achievement as a tragic composer. He also used some of this material in some of his comic operas. So just after Elisabetta was written, he writes The Barber of Seville. The following year, he writes Cenerentola. So in these years, he's writing the operas that would cement his reputation amongst his contemporaries as a great tragedian. And he was also writing the comedies that would cement his reputation in the 20th and 21st century as a great comedian. So this is a composer absolutely at the height of his powers and he was writing one, two operas a year, often at phenomenal speed, based in Naples, writing for that ensemble, but also sending works out to other houses around Italy. Rossini would never have imagined for one second that his works would be performed again and again and again. He certainly wouldn't have imagined that they would be performed after he was dead. Even in old age, when earlier works of his were published, he was horrified because he remained very much in an 18th century mindset that you write your opera for that season, for that house, for those singers, then you chuck it away and you write a new one in the next year. That whole idea changed through the middle of the 19th century, very much because of composers like Mendelssohn, who started taking works of the older generation, of Bach and of Mozart, and continuing to play them. And they 
generated this idea of a body of classics. Rossini really wasn't part of that idea. He didn't imagine music continuing to be performed, and he certainly wouldn't have imagined it continuing to be performed to today. He continued to write for an audience who he wanted to please. And that's a very, very 18th century idea, the idea of a composer as servant to the audience. Now, in the 19th century, a lot of very, very big changes happen. For a start, music becomes much darker, it becomes much more dissonant. The high romantic style that we know from Verdi and Wagner becomes much more prevalent. Singing becomes heavier, orchestras become bigger, and the whole tone of opera becomes psychologically much darker. As a consequence of that, the sort of vocal writing that Rossini demanded from his singers, that, that very, very delicate and very rapid style of singing, fell from practice. At the same time, we also get the rise of the idea of the composer as a uh, romantic and tortured genius and someone who writes very much from their heart to whom the audience must come and attempt to understand. And so the, the entire culture of music had changed in the latter half of the 19th century and Rossini was quite happy to watch it change. He was long retired, he'd retired in his late 30s. But this gave us a great difficulty when trying to revive it in the 20th century because that singing style had been lost. It's such a specialised approach to be able to sing both fast and fully over a large orchestra and be able to sustain enormous phrases. It's a very, very, very specialised and specific vocal technique. And once it had been lost, it was extremely hard to recover. Now, what happened, as with the recoveries of many previous great composers, is that people began in the 60s and the 70s, the Pesaro Festival, and across Italy, the serious works began to come back into the repertoire. The comic works had fared much better. But the difficulty of making them work in the modern theatre is twofold. Both the sheer physical difficulty of singing them and also this much more refined, lighter style for dealing with serious subjects. We are still very much heirs to the later 19th century and we like to see serious subjects dealt with with much darker, heavier and more emotionally charged music. And Rossini always stays one step removed emotionally. And so the character's emotions are absolutely real. These characters draw the audiences to them and their plights and their inner thoughts, but always within a very, very refined, very beautiful vocal style.